this here is another viewer's broken gaming PC, and, uh, well, I'll be honest, not sure if we're going to be able to fix this. The story goes, this rig was working just fine for a few years until the owner recently wanted to gift it to his son for Christmas. Well, if you're watching this video around the time it's published, Christmas probably already happened. So th that's the one we're, we're talking about. We're kind of, we're in the past here. And uh, so he wants to have this ready. As of time of filming, it's like December 1st. So we've got a few weeks to fix this for him. Uh, he was cleaning things up. He updated the BIOS or attempted to anyway. And that's when the issue arose. He tried to update the BIOS, entered the little portal within the UEFI to do so, and his screen went black. And that's a very weird problem I've never run into before. Uh, there are a few other cosmetic issues I want to address. Obviously, it needs to be cleaned a bit. Uh, this Noctua cooler, a very large one, is upside down, so that's driving my OCD crazy. Uh, the, the card is actually super close to the base of these Noctua fins as well, which is slightly concerning, though we are limited in terms of where we can slot this card into the motherboard because of the PCI slot layout. So I'm not sure what we're gonna be able to do there. Uh, but just a few other things we'll tackle once we figure out why the heck this system is not posting. Welcome to Fix or Flop. If you're new here, pertinent info is in the video description. Just know that everything you see us do here is free of charge. We don't charge the owners of these rigs anything to diagnose the systems. We also don't charge for components uh, that we need to replace at times. So like motherboards, graphics cards, etc. I'll replace what I can. If I can't have a manufacturer send something in, I'll dip into my own pocket at times. Uh, but sometimes I just have to call it because there's like maybe too many things that need to be replaced. I have to keep track of my inventory very carefully because we're fixing so many of these in the Orlando, Florida area. Anyway, that pertinent info again is in the description if you want to check it out. But uh, I'm hoping we can fix this one and I hope you'll stick around around for the ride. Are you ready? Stay with me. Mailgun is how modern companies work with email. Reach real customers at scale with its data-driven approach and easy to use UI. Its powerful email API and intuitive email marketing solutions enable Mailgun to control the entire email lifecycle from pre-development through delivery. And it's why they're still supporting companies like DHL, Wikipedia, and Microsoft. You'll find useful tools like Send Time Optimization, which automatically tracks and pushes emails to individuals at the times they're most likely to engage with them. You can also create massive reports for large email lists and test and avoid things like spam filters the next time you click send. Mailgun is the most relied upon email platform for growing businesses, and we greatly appreciate their continued support of this channel. Try today by using my link mailgun.com forward slash greg. Again, that's mailgun.com forward slash g-r-e-g, which you can also find at the top of this video's description. First things first, let's attempt to power the system on and, uh, well, try to replicate what the owner's describing so that we're on the same page. Also, if you hear something churning in the background, that's my editing rig rendering a video. It gets kind of toasty in there. Let's see. Power on. And it looks like the fans are spinning. Graphics card fans are spinning. CPU cooler fan is. So those are good signs, but nothing on screen, which is what was described to me. So in that sense, it's a good thing. We are on the same page. Uh, yeah, this is, this is an odd one. So I know that the owner already told me that the CMOS was cleared. It's not that I don't trust him. I just don't trust anyone when they say they've done things. I have to play it by those rules because, uh, well, I'm gonna look pretty silly if that turns out to be the issue and uh, the owner just wasn't aware that maybe he wasn't properly clearing the CMOS. So we have to check those things. Uh, so if you're watching, don't take it personally. We do this for everyone. So let's go ahead and power the system back off and uh, yeah, clear the CMOS. We're gonna have to jump pins because I don't see a button on the back of the board. And of course, a stupid board would have the pins for clearing the CMOS underneath the graphics card right here by the battery. So we're gonna jump these two pins with the power completely off for anywhere between 10 and 20 seconds. This will cut power to our BIOS chip resetting settings there. So if, we're, if there was an issue there, some sort of a corrupt sequence of settings, uh, this should clear those and give us a clean slate. But alas, that has done absolutely nothing for us. Can't say I'm surprised, but it was worth a shot. Now I did just notice, and perhaps should have noticed this sooner, the fact that this board has a series of debug LEDs. These can be useful for diagnosing issues with a rig. In this case, the LED illuminated now corresponds to DRAM, which, um, 
that'd be kind of strange for all of a sudden one of your memory modules to quit working, but that's what it's telling us it is. We've already cleared the CMOS, so it's not a software setting. It's not like a, a frequency setting in the BIOS for memory. So let's try swapping out some DIMMs. By the way, yes, all four of these DIMMs are seated correctly, and to the best of my knowledge, None of these were touched between the time the system was working and when it stopped. How about a single Avengers RGB Pro module? We can use the LEDs on top for reference, make sure these are getting power. A few moments later. But alas, that did nothing. I've tried all four slots with a known working dim, nothing. Still black screen and the board immediately throws up the DRAM LED. It's a bit odd that the board is telling us it's a DRAM problem, but we've pretty much done everything we can to isolate the DDR4 variable in the same symptom with the same LED is showing up, I, I don't know. Could be a CPU issue still. Uh, maybe we have some bent pins, uh, something lodged between the pins in the socket and the pads on the chip, who knows? I kind of want to dig in there next. I don't think this is a wiring issue. It's, again, it's just too specific of a problem to be a wiring issue, but I'm still gonna do my due diligence off camera just to let you know and check those things behind the motherboard tray down at the power supply level. Uh, what I want, really wanna do though is get this cooler off because I think something's going on with the CPU at this point. So let's see exactly what this CPU is. Definitely 10th gen because this is a, what a B460 in motherboard. Yes, I'm expecting 10th gen to Core i7 10700. Okay, so uh, this actually has integrated graphics. We can bypass the graphics card if we need to move further uh, or deeper into this troubleshooting. I've also disconnected all non-vitals, still nothing. Uh, so I'm gonna check the socket and the CPU. Uh, we might have to swap one or the other, the board or the chip to get this to work. But I've gotta admit, this socket looks pretty darn clean. No bent pins, no missing pins. This is how I'd expect it to look out of the box, brand new. Same goes for the underside of the CPU. Nothing blocking these pads here. Uh, looks really clean, nothing to complain about. And just for the lols, CMOS battery voltage is also fine. So we're at a crossroads. Again, it seems like either the motherboard or the CPU is at fault. And this is just becoming a, a pretty routine thing here on the playlist. The only hesitation I have with swapping in one of my known working 10th gen chips is that his board could potentially fry mine if in fact that is the reason why the system isn't posting. I can't confirm that his 10th gen chip is actually cooked because I don't have another B460 or Z equivalent motherboard to throw his CPU in. So I'm just gonna, I, get it, I, I don't have a choice. I'm just gonna put one of my CPUs in there and we're gonna see if we get the same symptoms. If we do, then that'll rule out the CPU, and at that point, I'll start looking at replacement motherboards. I'll probably have to buy one on eBay. So I actually have a 10600K as well as a 10900K, and, and I don't really wanna give him the 10900K for this kind of rig because his board has a, uh, what's well, a locked chipset, it's a B-series board. So he's not gonna be able to overclock. He won't be able to overclock this either, but uh, this is a little closer, I think, to the 10700 that he has in there currently. Uh, his is a non-K SKU. So let's throw this in there and see if anything happens. 12 o'clock midnight and still nothing even with my known working cpu in his rig we've um yeah we've we've got a problem here i think the motherboard needs to be replaced at this point we've already taken out the graphics card tried booting from integrated graphics both on my chip and his chip uh no picture no post it, it's it's a bit bizarre that just attempting to flash a bios i mean not even getting to the point where you're actually flashing but just trying to get into the i think what it's called m flash here with these msi boards uh, the M flash window is what bricked this rig. Super, super strange. At this point, the board is still telling us that it's a DRAM issue and we've ruled out every other component. There's only three in total that tie directly into system memory. Obviously the RAM itself, the CPU with memory controllers and things on board and the motherboard. So if it is in fact a DRAM issue and it just so happened to occur at the same time this user tried to update his BIOS, then I think a board replacement is a done deal. Is it a, could it be a corrupt BIOS? Yes. If in fact the BIOS was being flashed and the viewer was mistaken, then yes, the, a corrupt BIOS would give us these symptoms or symptoms similar to this. I'm not sure if we'd be getting the debug LED notification that we're getting. Uh, maybe the board wouldn't be sending any lights at all, but, I can't confirm that because I wasn't there to witness what was happening when everything uh, stopped functioning. So 
what is this? A B, this is a B460 board. Yeah, so let me let me triple check that I don't have a board I can replace this one with. Again, we'll probably have to order one. Well, 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 look what I found. We actually had a spare Z590 motherboard. I forgot, this is the one that I took out of my personal rig when I upgraded uh, to the 13th gen Intel. So this will be a perfect swap for him. Not only is this an ATX board versus his MATX, so he has empty space in his uh, mid tower, uh, but this also has optimal PCI slot spacing. So his larger CPU cooler will fit a bit better with his graphics card. Uh, this also is obviously a more modern chipset, even though we can't overclock with his non-K SKU, it's just an overall better board for him. So let's swap his out for this. Uh, we'll try tackling anything else that we could possibly do with his old board, see if there's something we can fix. Again, it's it, it might be a corrupt BIOS. I really have no way of knowing here with the tools at my disposal, but uh, maybe someone else will and I can send it out and report back in a pinned comment. But let's get this thing swapped in along with his original CPU and original memory. And yes, I understand. I'm kind of just jumping into the deep end here. We should honestly test this uh, before assembling everything again, but I'm fairly confident that uh, we're right about this and I'm willing to just do it all at once for the sake of attempting to save time. You know, I've got to say, I'm really digging the way that this uh, NZXT board looks in this case, especially with this Noctua cooler, just black on black, black memory, looking pretty sleek. It's also really nice that this graphics card has a bit more breathing room, again, being one slot lower on this board, uh, kind of a consequence of going with a more compact layout like MATX or especially ITX, the 16 lane slot, the uppermost slot is gonna be really close to the socket, which could impede your ability to stack on some larger coolers like this. We'll get our eight pin supplemental cable connected and that's pretty much it. Everything else has already been taken care of. Everything's rewired. All of his original components with the exception of the motherboard are now in here. Let's see how we do then. I'm crossing everything I got in hopes that this works. Otherwise I'm gonna look a fool on camera after redoing all of this uh, wiring and stuff. So. Okay, Whew. the hesitation there for a second scared me. Come on. Yes, <laughs> okay, the hesitation while a system boots up for the first time after doing a lot of work. That is, uh, that's great to see. All four DIMMs are detected. We've got his storage drive that looks like detected as well. We'll just uh, enable XMP for him, make sure that's all stable and he'll be good to go. Now we just have this final question here regarding this board. What on earth is wrong with this? And Again, there, there's only so much more I can really test here. I suspect it's a corrupt memory chip. Um, I, I, I highly doubt it's anything else because the viewer told me he was attempting to flash the BIOS when this happened. We checked the CMOS battery, voltage is fine there. We tried multiple dim slots with multiple dims. We tried multiple CPUs and still couldn't get this thing to post. And it's just stuck on that DRAM light, a very strange symptom, I still, I'm still completely clueless. Now, again, I wanna take the time here to show you that there is nothing inherently wrong with the socket. It looks really clean, uh, just physically all around, pretty immaculate, so there's not much else I can do here. I, I mean, I could start probing random places on the board, but again, I don't really have the tools here to start removing and resoldering replacement SMDs. I don't even have donor boards for a lot of these, so it's, um, it, it's just something where it might be more feasible for you if you're running a repair shop to actually repair small places on the boards. But uh, for me, it's much easier, uh, much less time consuming to just swap the board outright. We could be talking about a short somewhere between the slots and the chip. We could be talking about a chipset short. Uh, it could be so much that could go wrong. Uh, and that's why, I mean, by design, motherboards are supposed to be the things that fail first. You want the motherboard to fail in most cases before the CPU does. Uh, and ideally you'd want the power supply to fail before the motherboard does if we're talking about some sort of power surge issue. So there should be protections in place there. Uh, it's just not a very common thing, thankfully. When it does happen though, it can be very confusing because you saw the motherboard was trying to tell us that our DRAM was at fault, but we isolated everything down to the board Nothing else was to blame. I will say these thermal pads are like super chalky. I, I can't even pull these up with my hand. I have to scrape this stuff off because it's just so, look at that, it, it's breaking like, like clay. Um, yeah, probably shouldn't, shouldn't be like that. And for those who are curious, here is the board 
completely stripped down. So this has uh, all of the heat shields removed. And again, the physical inspection checks out. I don't see anything super alarming here. At this point, we would just have to start probing. Uh, and I would also tend to focus some of my time, I imagine, on the uh, BIOS chips, which are, well, the BIOS chip's probably down here. I think it's this chip. Uh, but you, know, you, you, you really would be spending quite a bit of time repairing this. I'm not sure how expensive this board is. Uh, you might save yourself, you know, a hundred bucks in terms of like sheer expense, but you've got to think about your time as well. Uh, and then you've also got to hunt down that particular BIOS chip there. There are some tools that'll let you just kind of jump onto this chip and, and flash it that way. Uh, might try to invest in something like that to see if we can salvage this board in the future. But for now, I am glad that the uh, owner's rig is now back up and running with an updated, more modern board at that. Thank you so much for watching this far into this one. Again, my goal is just to get it back up and running. However we are able to do that uh, is fine by me. I know it's probably not the most efficient way of diagnosing a problem like this, or at least remedying the issue, replacing the board outright and calling it. I did, I feel like, do enough due diligence checking the battery, checking the socket, doing what we could just to physically inspect the board. Uh, but beyond that, again, it just, I just don't have the tools nor frankly the time to start probing random places. So um, a shame that it came to that, but the good thing is the system is back up and running and uh, the owner can, can give this to his kid for Christmas and, uh, and be able to do it in time, right? And without dipping into his own pocket, which is the ultimate goal here. I do have to say that uh, this rig still needs a bit of cleaning. So out of uh, out of the shot, I'm just gonna do this after the, the video ends. I'm gonna take it outside and uh, give it a quick dusting with my electric duster. Uh, but other than that, I think it's ready to go. Fixed up cable management just a tad. It looks a lot cleaner, I've gotta say, with this new or newer NZXT Z590 motherboard in here. And uh, it all just comes together so much better. The, the graphics card spacing as well from the CPU cooler. That was a potential issue. Again, we were like millimeters from shorting out components on that graphics card. So I feel a lot better about the state of the rig currently. And again, it works, so a job well done. If you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. Consider subscribing if you have not already. And uh, do a few other things while you're at it. If you don't mind, consider joining our public Discord server. That's free of charge. If you want to support us on Patreon for as little as $1 a month, you can do that as well. That is in the description. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more content. I think it's already 2023 by the time you guys watch this, but uh, thank you for another great year of, uh, of videos here on the channel. Thanks for your support. Just by viewing these videos, you allow us to continue doing what we're doing, especially for the, the local area here in Orlando, Florida. Being able to fix and deep clean systems for free is only possible because of you. I'm able to make money on the backside, obviously, from the, from the advertisements, from YouTube, AdSense, etc. Uh, and I wouldn't have any of that if it wasn't for your viewership. So again, thank you very much. I will uh, see you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.